making headlines tonight. The 24th of June in 2022 marks the 55th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations between Cambodia and Vietnam. The King of Cambodia, His Majesty Noah Dom Shahamani, has expressed his pleasure over the strong relationship. The Royal Cambodian People's Party has won the majority of seats from the commune Sankrat Council election held on Sunday the 5th of June, according to official results released by the National Election Committee on Friday 24th of June. The Southeast Asian bloc ASEAN should rethink its approach to engaging with Myanmar and demand specific actions and timeframes to end hostilities in the military-ruled country, the United Nations expert said. And finally, High Regency Phnom Penh and Tribe Art Cambodia are hosting their third joint culture event with Nak Noi's first solo art exhibition in Phnom Penh this Friday the 24th of June. This is the Daily Roundup here on the EAC News Channel. A good evening to you, I'm Anthony Ellis. The 24th of June of 2022 marks the 55th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between Cambodia and Vietnam. The King of Cambodia, His Majesty King Norodom Shahamani, has expressed his pleasure over the strong relationship and has said for more than five decades the two countries have maintained good and trustworthy neighbourness. EAC News reporter Dashana Guchin has the story. In the royal decree signed on 21st June 2022, the King of Cambodia stated that Cambodia and Vietnam have enjoyed cordial bonds of traditional friendship and close cooperation in all dimensions over the last five decades, based on the spirit of good neighborliness, solidarity, mutual trust and understanding. His Majesty further wrote, the celebration of the 55th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations will bring us the memories which we extended to each other in the past for the cause of national liberation, unification, independence, and development, and will further enhance the sentiment of solidarity and close cooperation for the shared prosperity of two nations, the ASEAN family and the world at large. Cambodia and Vietnam established diplomatic relations on 24 June 1967 as a show of support and solidarity against foreign aggression. Prime Minister Hun Sen sent a letter to the Prime Minister of Vietnam, Pham Minh Chin, congratulating Vietnam on maintaining friendly relations with Cambodia and expressing his belief that diplomatic relations between the two countries will only be strengthened going forward. The Prime Minister wrote, Having gone through a long time of hardship for the cause of national liberation, unification, independence, and development, I strongly believe that Cambodia and Vietnam will continue to deepen our traditional bonds of friendship, long-lasting relations, and comprehensive cooperation in many different areas at bilateral, regional, and international fora in the coming years, which in turn contributes to the maintenance of peace, stability, and sustainable development of the ASEAN community and the world at large. Addressing the 25th anniversary of the Day of Remembrance of the journey to overthrow the Pol Pot genocidal regime at the historic Gat Khmer X-16 military site in Thabong Khmum province, the Prime Minister of Vietnam stated that despite facing many obstacles, Cambodia and Vietnam's relations are still good and solidarity between the two countries has grown even more, especially during the COVID-19 crisis. He added that he considers Cambodia a good brother to Vietnam and said that the two countries have helped each other in the past, which led to the escape from foreign aggression and the overthrow of Pol Pot's genocidal regime in Cambodia. He also thanked Cambodia for helping Vietnam gain its independence. The patriots of the Cambodian Revolution have sacrificed flesh and blood to help the Vietnamese people who have a tradition of sincerity and love, said Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin. The Vietnamese people always want to remember this and will give the Cambodian people our best regards, sincerity, and love. Vietnam gained independence from France on 2 September 1945. However, due to the effects of the Cold War in the 1950s, the country became divided into the communist regime of North Vietnam, which allied with the Soviet Union, and South Vietnam, which allied with the United States. With the help of Prince Norodom Sihanouk, North Vietnam was given permission to utilize Cambodian territory in the fight for national unification, which allowed the North Vietnamese army to conquer and occupy South Vietnam and reunify the nation on 30th April 1975. Mm -hmm. At the end of 1978, Vietnam sent its volunteer troops to join the Kampuchean United Front for National Salvation to overthrow the Khmer Rouge genocidal regime, enabling Cambodia to guarantee the right to life, which was the starting point for national development until today. Since then, the relationship between the two countries has become stronger and closer. Darshan Agochen, EAC News. 
the ruling Cambodian People's Party has won majority of seats from the Commune Suncrate Council election held on Sunday the 5th of June. According to official results released by the National Election Committee on Friday the 24th of June, EAC News reporter Dekanin has more details. According to the National Election Council, the Cambodian People's Party controls the largest number of communes and cut seats with more than 9,000, followed by the Candlelight Party with more than 2,000. Of the 17 parties that took part in the 5th Communes and Cut Council election, only 9 were able to win seats, of which the CPP won 9,326, the Candlelight Party won 2,198, Phun Sampik won 19, Khmer National United Party won 13, Grassroots Democrat Party won 6, Cambodian Nation Love Party won 5, Cambodian Youth Party won 3, and the Cambodian Young Party and Beehive Social Democratic Party won one seat each. Communes and Cut are part of the Cambodian subnational administration, but these elections are still seen as very important for the upcoming National Assembly elections in 2023. A senior party official of the Candlelight Party, Son Chai, announced on the 6th of June that the party will accept the council seats which it has won, despite overall dissatisfaction with the results and a view that the election was not free or fair. The Candlelight Party originated from the former party of Som Rang Si, a longtime opposition leader and former CNRP president, currently living in exile in France but still retaining support, winning 2,198 seats after returning to politics. In 2012, the Som Rang Si Party merged with Gumsakas Human Rights Party to form the CNRP. Speaking after a meeting with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in Cambodia, the President of Cambodian Human Rights Committee, Kaira Mi, said that the results of the 5th Manic Communist and Cut Council election are logical based on the distribution of support between the CPP, who received more than 5 million votes, and the Candlelight Party, who received around 1.6 million votes. He explained, if we compare the results to the votes placed in 2017, the CPP received 3.5 million votes, the CNRP along with the Human Rights Party and Candlelight Party got 3 million. When the Candlelight Party lost a partner and did not have the Human Rights Party join because Gum Sokash did not participate in the election, the party lost about half of its support. This is logically reflected in the number of votes that the Candlelight Party received, 1.6 million, and which is equal to half the votes the CNRP got before. We have received the size of the population and amount of support received by the CPP. The swing vote has increased by more than 5 million votes. Former CNRP President Gum Sok Ka did not place his vote in the 5th Communion Sankat Council election 2022. Prince Nodram Jakarabut, President of the Royalist Party, Fun Sun Pek, also did not go to the polls as he did not register to vote. Prime Minister Hun Sen is known around the world as one of the longest-serving leaders currently still in power, leading the royal government of the Cambodia and the CPP. The 5th Commune Sankat Council election was held on the 5th of June, with 17 parties competing for 11,622 Commune Sankat seats nationwide from 1,652 communes. The official results released by the NEC showed that more than 7.3 million people went to vote for the election, equivalent to more than 83% of the 9.2 million registered voters. The Canin EEC News. The Royal Government of Cambodia has decided to increase the number of provincial and municipal governors to 11 and to district governors to 7. The increase is in accordance with the amended law on the administration of the capital, provinces, municipalities, districts and khans, which was recently signed into law by His Majesty King Norodom Shahamani. EAC News reported that Shana Guchin has the story. Prime Minister Hun Sen has instructed the Minister in Charge of the Office of the Council of Ministers, the Minister of Interior, the Minister of Economy, the Minister of Public Works and Transport, the Minister of All Ministries and the Heads of All Relevant Institutions to be responsible for the implementation of this sub-decree in their respective duties. With this new law, the Board of Governors of the Capital and Province was increased by four members in each province and capital, and the Board of Governors of the Municipalities, Districts and Khans was increased by two members in each municipality, district and Khan. In his closing remarks at the conclusion of the dissemination and implementation of the National Program for Subnational Democratic Development Phase 2 Workshop on 21st March 2022, Prime Minister Hun Sen stated that the development of human resources at the sub-national administrative level is an important task Cambodia must undertake in order for further development and to succeed in mitigating various risks. He said, while the sub-national level should be responsible, we see that it is lacking in strength, so we need to amend the law limiting the number of people responsible in the framework of provincial and district governors. At present, there are a total of 175 governors in the 25 capitals and provinces of Cambodia. Each provincial capital has seven governors. 
Additionally, there are 1,020 district governors in the 204 municipalities of Cambodia, with five governors in each district. Darshana Gauchin, EAC News. The spokesman of the Ministry of Commerce, Pen Sovacek, told EAC News that the decision to buy fuel from Russia or other sources is the right of the private sector. EAC News reporter Dekanin has further details. Speaking to EAC News on Wednesday, 22nd of June, spokesperson Pan Sovichi stated that Cambodia is a country with a free market economy and the Ministry of Commerce just acts as a regulator and facilitator, gives advice and has no authority to order the private sector to buy goods or commodities from any specific source. He said, We have observed that there is information that the price of oil bought from Russia is cheaper, but there is no indication or any incentive for the private sector to buy from any source, as it is the choice of the private sector to make their own decisions. I cannot tell you about the source of oil on where it is imported from or if it needs to change to a cheaper source, as it depends on the private sector to decide which source is cheaper to buy, easier to transport, easier to contact, buy from, etc. The crisis of rising oil prices stems from Russia's launched attack on Ukraine and the U.S.-led West, which subsequently imposed a series of sanctions on Russian energy, particularly cutting off Russian gas and oil exports to the world. China and India have, however, seized the opportunity to buy crude oil from Russia for refining and distribution. According to Reuters, China's crude oil imports from Russia saw a 55% year-on-year increase in May, knocking Saudi Arabia out of the list of top suppliers to China as Russia offers supply discounts in the face of sanctions. According to data from the Chinese Customs Administration, Russia's oil imports, including supplies pumped through pipelines in the Siberian Pacific Ocean from Russia's European and Far Eastern ports, totaled nearly 8.42 million tonnes. This equates to about 1.98 million barrels per day, up from a quarter of 1.59 million barrels in April. Data show that Russia has taken the top spot of suppliers as the world's largest exporter of crude oil after a 19-month gap, showing that Moscow can still find its buyers despite sanctions from the West and discounted prices. In Russia, the current price is about 93 cents per liter. In the United States, it's about $1.37 per liter. And in France, it is $2.19 per liter. The price of fuel sold in the Cambodian market between the 21st to the 30th of June is 5,800 real for regular gasoline and 6,300 real for diesel. Prime Minister Hun Sen has often spoken out against Russian aggression on Ukraine, but has decided not to support any sanctions imposed on other countries, as this would lead to further losses that made the global crisis worse. While addressing the World Economic Forum Strategic Outlook on ASEAN session on the 25th of May, Prime Minister Hun Sen said, <laughs> ສົມໃບຕະນະດາຕອນນະຄັມເກກໍຄາດຄູນໃດແດ່ກົງຖ້າລະໃຫ້ປະເທດເຈີກໄກ່ກໍປະເທດແດ່ນັກກະປົງດ
The Prime Minister's assistant said that from 1999 to the present day, over the last 23 years, 387 families gave birth to triplets or quadruplets and received generous donations from the Prime Minister and the First Lady to help support their daily hardships, especially in raising triplets to be the grandchildren of both the Prime Minister and the First Lady. He added that these donations are not gifts from the royal government, the Cambodian Red Cross, or the CPP, as they are not politically motivated. Instead, these donations are sincere gifts made from the Prime Minister and First Lady's hearts, who understand the real difficulties faced by those who have given birth to triplets or quadruplets. Darshana Galchen, EAC News. If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. EAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of our platforms and channels. The EAC News app, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website, www.eacnews.asia. Join me and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favorite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. The 14th BRICS Summit held on Thursday opened a new chapter of cooperation and demonstrated a bright future for the BRICS mechanism, according to Chinese Foreign Minister Ma Zhaohu. Chinese President Xi Jinping on Thursday called on BRICS countries to foster high-quality partnership as they embark on a new journey of cooperation. Other leaders of BRICS countries are South Africa President Cyril Ramphosa, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Indian Prime Minister Navendra Modi were present at the summit. In his welcoming speech, President Zing noted that they faced some formidable and complex circumstances over the past year. BRICS countries have embraced BRICS spirits and openness exclusivenesses and win-win cooperation while enhancing solidarity and, and coordination to the joint tackle of challenges. BRICS countries as important emerging markets and major development countries need to act with a sense of responsibility, speak out of equality and justice, remain firm in conviction and that they would defeat the pandemic, pull strength for economic recovery, advocate sustainable development, joint contribute, wisdom and ideas, the highly quality development of the BRICS corporation, and bring positive stabilizing and constructive strength to the world, said Chinese President. Zhu then delivered a speech titled Fostering High Quality Partnership Embarking on New Journey to BRICS Corporation. 
BRICS countries should support each other on issues concerning their representative core interests, practice true multilateralism, uphold justice, fairness and unity, and oppose hegemony, bullying and division, Zing said. Xi said China was willing to work with BRICS members to promote effective implementation of global security intentative to contribute to global stability. First, Xi said BRICS countries need to uphold stability and safeguard with world peace and tranquility. Second, Jing called on BRICS countries to uphold cooperation to boost development and jointly tackle risk and challenges. Third, Jing said BRICS countries need to uphold the pioneering spirit and innovation and unleash the potential and viability of cooperation. Fourth, Jing called on BRICS countries to uphold openness, inclusiveness and pull collective wisdom and strength. The five BRICS countries account for a quarter of the world economic and over 40% of the global population. Those Confrontations between protesters and security forces erupted in Quito, Ecuador on Thursday the 23rd of June after a large group were gathered in the city north to demand the need to blockade emergency measures. Since June 13th, discontent over fuel, food, and other essentials has sparked violent protests across Ecuador, causing President Guillermo Lasso to proclaim a state of exception in six districts, including the capital, Quito. The government allowed thousands of marchers into the headquarters of a major cultural organization and pulled back security forces there. In exchange, they asked for people and goods like food and medicine to be allowed to circulate freely. The House of Culture has been taken by force by the people. It's the first triumph, brothers and sisters. Second, what the national government is saying at this moment, it's simply in their hands. We are not going to lose the North. I have been detained. They have tried to assassinate me. Yet we are alive and we have said, here are the 10 points and period. And if for that reason it falls, the government, it is not our problem, brothers and sisters. President of the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, Leonidas Iza, has said. Indigenous leader Nera Chalan said, We hold the police responsible for the women who are here, publicly, all of you who were given birth to by a woman. We hold you responsible if you divide a family, if you take away a family. We hold you responsible, gentlemen of the public force. Protest leaders denounced police violence during the demonstrations, with one protester identified as Byron Guatatoka killed after being struck in the head by a tear gas canister. Demonstrators have entered flower farms and oil terminals, causing damage in places and disrupting the production of crude. The Southeast Asian bloc, ASEAN, should rethink its approach to engaging with Myanmar and demand specific actions and timeframes to end hostilities and military-ruled country, a United Nations expert said on Thursday. Special reporter on human rights Tom Andrews also called on UN member states to engage formally or informally with Myanmar's shadow national unity government to help the humanitarian situation. The 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations is divided over how to deal with Myanmar, where the military overthrew an elected government last year and has seen led a brutal crackdown on opponents. Shortly after its coup, ASEAN members, including Myanmar, came to an agreement to restore peace, but progress has stalled amid weak enforcement. The agreement is meaningless if it sits on a piece of paper, Andrews told a news conference after a six-day trip to Malaysia, one of the junta's most vocal critics in the region. After one year of a lack of progress, let's rethink this approach by adding a strategy to the implementation of that approach, he said, adding ASEAN countries should heed Malaysia's call for more action. ASEAN late last year took the unusual step of excluding Myanmar's military leaders from a high-profile regional summit for failing to honor the peace deal. But current chair Cambodia has since made overtures to the junta, including inviting its defense minister to a regional meeting on Wednesday despite criticism from activists. Countries are also divided over communicating with the NUG, an alliance of anti-junta groups in hiding or in self-imposed exile, which Andrews called a legitimate entity. From a practical point of view, there's lots of information that the NUG has available that could be of extremely valuable use for these countries seeking to give humanitarian aid, he said. The junta has outlawed the NUG for being terrorist and urged countries not to engage with them. Now, let's have a look at the weather and what you can expect for tomorrow.
And finally, Hyde Rinsey Phnom Penh and the Tribart Cambodia are hosting their joint cultural event with Nuck Noy's first solo art exhibition in Phnom Penh this Friday, 24th of June. Let's get to know him, his art, and a little bit about his beginnings to see what inspires him. Nat Noy is a promising young Cambodian artist whose work has always embodied the dreamlike escapism. He welcomes the viewer to abandon reality for new realms, and Nat Noy's unique style stems solely from his imagination. Born and raised in Siem Reap, Nat Noy began making art when he was little and first saw his sister's drawings. Instead of focusing on drawing forests like his sister, Nat Noy thought, why not draw forests out of people? Thus, his creativity was unleashed. Nat Noy did not have access to many resources, so he had to save his own money to buy art supplies as his parents were not supportive of him pursuing an artist's career at the time. When he was little, on his way from home to school, he would take a particular road next to a pagoda where he would see people painting murals, which helped spark his inspiration. He would stop to watch them paint for hours and ask questions. Yeah, that is the big inspiration for me. I, 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 stand, in, I stand there sometimes. I just staring, spending hours to just watching what they are doing. I forgot his name, but he was nice to me that he, he said that um, I, it, you're going to be a, a good artist if you really like art. Yeah, that's what he told me. And he encouraged me to, to draw. Although he never received formal training, the first time that Noy considered himself a professional artist was when he sold his first drawing for $100 at age 15. His artworks now range from $35 to $10,000 for paintings on 2 meters by 2 meter canvases. Some of Nat Noy's intricate artworks from 2018 will be showing in the exhibition on Friday. He said that back then, there were people who would offer him only $50 for his artwork that he would spend over six weeks creating. However, now people finally see the great amount of detail, care, and hard work that he puts into making his art. He is currently in his first year of visual arts course at Fa Penlu Salapa in Madamong province. He began his artistic journey with colored pencils, pens, watercolors, and now works also with acrylic. Although most of his current works are acrylic on canvas, his favorite medium is still watercolors because he can stop and pick up the work anytime he wants. He said working with acrylic is harder because he needs to take proper care of the brushes as acrylic paint dries out and hardens. However, he still does most of his work with acrylic now as he said it is hard for him to ship his watercolor artworks in frames. Most of Nat Noy's current clientele are foreigners, but he hopes to break into the local market as well. Although his surrealist art may not be what locals are used to seeing, a Khmer artistic sensibility is still present in his paintings, inspired by things like traditional Khmer jewelry, intricate costumes, and architecture. His works are layered with metaphors and symbolism and are constantly evolving. His signature style, however, is still very recognizable, making his work highly collectible and featuring out of this world human like creatures in costumes, headdresses, and other embellishments. Common recurring themes in his work include strong women and female empowerment, as he gains a lot of inspiration from the strong women in his life, especially his mother and sister. At the exhibition on Friday, viewers can see portraits of his mother, the King Father of Cambodia, or even his own self portraits. He explained that one of his artworks was entitled Sisters and was inspired by two Khmer Muslim girls who were being bullied by wearing hijabs. He decided to depict them in his painting with the hope of empowering them as well as to stop religious divide and discrimination. <laughs> At first, Nat Noy did not want to show his artwork, but the more he continues to create, the more he thinks his work needs to be seen. In the future, he hopes to open his own art gallery. I, I used to only thinking to create art, not showing people, people at all. But I, at some point, I felt like it deserved to be shown. It deserved to be seen somewhere because I think people can judge it, people can have opinion on it, so I might improve. Well, I, I was always telling myself that I'm an artist since I was young because I had to have my own vision, my own plan <laughs> ahead so I can go for it. So yeah, we need to have plan. 
The opening of Nat Noise Kingdom Art Exhibition will take place at the Hyatt Regency Phnom Penh on Friday, 24th of June from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Entrance to the exhibition will cost $55 per person. The event will feature new works, interactive art, live painting, free-flow canapes and drinks, and special guest DJs. For one night only, everyone who attends this event will also receive 20% off for all of their art purchases. The exhibition will run for about six weeks. Nat Noi has shown that no matter how little resources you have, as long as you have the ambition and the passion, you can accomplish anything you want. Congratulations, Nat Noi, on your first solo exhibition. I'm the Kanin from EAC News, Phnom Penh. Thank you for watching the Daily Roundup here on EAC News Channel. For more breaking news and updates, check our website, eacnews.asia, or search EAC News on Telegram, Smart TV, or your favourite app store. More from the EAC News team tomorrow night at 8pm. We'll see you then.